Good evening. It's Friday, April 19th. Welcome to Berks County News. I'm Mike Rossi. Angela Del Vecchio is off this week. Our top story tonight, a three vehicle accident in Maxitani Township has left a man dead. It happened this morning on Route 222 in the area of the Maxitani Zion Church. Police say the unidentified victim was traveling southbound on Route 222 when for some reason he swerved into the northbound lanes. The victim's Volvo struck a dump truck head on, causing the dump truck to flip over and spill its load of stone. The victim's car then crossed back over the southbound lanes where it struck another vehicle. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. His identity is being withheld until relatives are notified. The driver of the other vehicles were not seriously injured. Route 222 was closed in both directions for several hours, but reopened just before noon. Police continue their investigation. Well, a Reading man remains in poor condition in Reading Hospital tonight after a Chestnut Street shooting yesterday morning. 22-year-old Miguel Polanco underwent surgery yesterday afternoon after he was shot in the neck and jaw. 22-year-old Carmen Rodriguez is in custody in connection with the shooting. She's being held in Berks County Prison. Well, a Reading man charged with murder is at home this evening. 39-year-old David Calpino was released on bail today. His parents met the $150,000 bail. Calpino is charged with shooting 31-year-old Zarek Rosario last month. Calpino faces charges including homicide and aggravated assault. Well, four Reading men are behind bars tonight after a drug raid along a rather notorious city street. The four were arrested yesterday after an undercover investigation into the drug activity at this house along the 300 block of North 6th Street in the city. You may, uh, may remember the huge drug crackdown earlier this year in the same block. Police are calling yesterday's arrests a continuation of that drug sweep. All four of the men arrested yesterday are in Berks County Prison tonight. Police are still looking for three more suspects in connection with this drug raid, and they say they won't stop investigating this block until all drug activity has stopped. Well, one year ago today, the nation was torn apart by a huge bomb blast at the federal building in Oklahoma City. 168 people were killed. 19 of those were children. The healing process is not over even after a year. And today in Oklahoma City, there was an emotional memorial to remember the victims. But the pain from this act of terrorism has reached far beyond the borders of Oklahoma City. Tonight, Sandra Mangine talks to some local students about how they're coming to grips with this tragedy one year later. These are the pictures we will never forget. The entire country felt Oklahoma City's pain in the aftermath of the explosion. Then, once the initial shell shock was over, for many people, a new feeling emerged, fear. We have the fear of terrorism in this country now. We know that that fast, 168 people were killed in the United States. That's something that's on television. It doesn't happen here. Thomas Couples is a professor at Alvernia College. He knows a lot about terrorism. For 25 years, he served as a special agent for the FBI. Today, some of his criminal justice students gathered to talk about what has happened in the year since the bombing. Many say they are still coming to terms with the fact that the prime suspects are from our own country. When I had found out that it was a person who lived in this country, who served in the, you know, the military, um, that this is the person that's being accused of this, uh, then it became anger um, and just rage, uh, because how can an American do this to fellow Americans? Couple says millions of Americans share that feeling of anger and disbelief. Shouldn't look like one of us. Right? Shouldn't be somebody that lives eight blocks away. Somebody that's been in the United States military, for instance. April 19, 1995 will be a day forever burned in our memories. Much like the assassination of John F. Kennedy and the Challenger explosion, many people say they still remember exactly where they were when they first heard the tragic news. I was coming into the, actually one of the dorms here at school, and I had shock, just complete disbelief. The shock even made one student think twice for a while about working in the field of crisis management. I started getting doubts if I wanted to continue it, continue the criminal justice field. But she decided to stick it out and go on, just like the brave people of Oklahoma City. In Reading, Sandra Menjean, Channel 5, Berks County News. Well, despite the appearance of the men and women who are usually dressed in black robes, there was no gavel banging or calls for order coming from Alvernia College last night. The League of Women Voters and the Berks County Bar Association sponsored an open forum to meet your judges. 
Organizers say the forum helps inform the public to the responsibilities of our judges. The program is to educate and inform the public about the system and how it works and to give the public an opportunity to ask questions of judges and when most people don't really have an opportunity to do that. Judges from a variety of divisions delivered brief descriptions of their jobs and later answered questions from the public. The growing program will be making appearances nearly 30 in 30 counties in the Commonwealth. Well, still to come tonight here on Berks County News, we'll tell you why some Reading students are shooting hoops to help one of their own. And we'll get a visit from a very familiar birthday face. For Shillington, Sinking Spring, and Mooresville, Berks County News will be right back. Remember when savings started in school, when a banker knew your name, lived in your neighborhood, when the only surprises you'd have were the good ones, and when dreams could come true. Remember banking the way it used to be, when banking decisions were right for you. Come home to real community banking. Come home to Berks County Bank. Banking the way it used to be. Center delivers the three things you need. The best selection of hand-picked pre-owned cars and trucks in Pennsylvania, a genuine concern for our customers, and our golden value pricing. One low price clearly marked for no hassle. Quality, people, price. Count on the golden used car super center. You can count on us for the best buy on a used car. It's been a busy week for local bank corporations. Many have released their annual figures. Dan Schaefer has those numbers and more from Wall Street in this week's business report. Tonight, the numbers are provided by the home state Pennsylvania Growth Fund. The big caps are basically flat, but the over-the-counter market hit new highs. For the week, the Dow is up just 2.89. The S&P closed at 645.8, up 8.37 for the week, and the NASDAQ closed off its new high but at 1138.90. Locally, gainers for the week were Penn National, again with a great gain, and VF Corp, Exide, and Cartech. And speaking of local companies, more earnings and annual meetings were held this week. Berks County Bank led the way with a huge first quarter and a great year. Sovereign reported a 29% increase in the first quarter and a good year. VF reported results in line with expectations and off a bit for the first quarter. Now, the buzz last week was Yahoo, and this week, it's Planet Hollywood. The star-studded IPO is up 8 and 7 eighths from its offering price of 18. That puts the price of each existing restaurant well over $100 million, and the value of a seat in excess of $100,000. Another IPO out today was H&R Block's spin-off of CompuServe. This was priced at 30 and closed at 33. It looks like the market still has an appetite for new stuff at just about any price. Economic reports were in line with expectations, except the closely watched Philadelphia Fed business activity, which came in at 17.3 versus expectations of 4. Next week, we can look forward to reports on retail sales, import and export prices, durable goods, and existing home sales. For the Berks County News Business Report, I'm Dan Schaefer. Well, nowadays, finding a job can seem like an impossible task for almost anyone, especially those with disabilities. That's why more than 400 people attended the second annual Employability Expo today in Wyomissing. The event offered people a chance to get hands-on information concerning disabilities in the workplace. Organizers say the forum allows the disabled a chance to show employers their talents. As is pretty typical, I think, across the United States, um, employers in the community, as well as people with disabilities, are kind of shy and are kind of timid when it comes to employment. Um, the employers frequently are not real aware of um, the individuals that they do have a lot of skills and abilities. And 
Besides giving information, the forum also had more than 40 representatives from local companies such as Core States, Meridian Bank, and UGI Utilities offer mock job interviews to help the disabled fine-tune their interviewing skills. Numerous seminars were also offered. Topics ranged from how to get ahead in the business world to how the disabled can use advanced technology to make business easier. Well, this may look like an ordinary after-school basketball game, but this one has extra special meaning. Kristen Miller, seen here with the blue bandana, is fighting a battle with leukemia. The Reading High juniors facing months of chemotherapy, and now her classmates are stepping in to help. These are members of the four foreign language clubs at the school, and they're shooting hoops in this showdown tournament, all to raise money for Kristen. It's the fourth year they've held the tournament, and this year the proceeds total just under $1,000, all to help their classmate. Well, students at Holy Name are getting quite a lesson from the creator of some of their favorite characters. Author Bruce Coville visited the school today to talk with elementary age students and to hold a workshop with seniors. Corville's written children's books such as Sarah's Unicorn and The Monster's Ring. He's especially known for his work in science fiction. Now, during the visit, Coville also held a book signing session for the students. Well, residents of the Lutheran home at Topton are helping to celebrate the home's 100th anniversary, 100th birthday actually this year. It's an anniversary several of the residents also know themselves, and it's one that's kind of specialty for a certain celebrity, where Al Benetham explains. It was a very special birthday party Thursday night. The Lutheran home of Topton celebrated its 100th birthday. Special guests of honor were 17 residents of the Lutheran home who are 100 years of age or older. They were there to help blow out the candles and had some help from a very special personality. NBC Today shows Willard Scott. The man who has made having a 100th birthday a national event was on hand. And I also had a chance to speak to Willard. Willard, why don't you tell us why you're here tonight? Why am I here? Yeah, that's that old joke. You remember the guy, the preacher says, why are we all here? He says, we're here because we ain't all there. <laughs> Got to get one in. No, I'm here for a good cause, a very good cause. I like to celebrate, you know, birthday centenarians. Uh, I celebrate birthdays of companies. Uh, we salute different, uh, uh, you know, centennial celebrations. So it's uh, Topton Centennial, and I'm here. I want to ask you a question. When you're 100 years old, who do you want to interview you? I like you. <laughs> I want you to interview me at 100. I would love to. Wouldn't that be great? I'm 62, so what have I got now, 38 years ago or something like that? And before the interview was finished, well, Willard had a little gift for me. There's only one thing wrong that I've observed about you. I don't use this thing anymore, but I think what we've got to do for you is to give you a new image. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, meet Mr. Rob. How does it look? I think it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. A little styling. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. thanks. See you later. My thanks to Willard Scott, a lovable teddy bear and a pretty good weatherman. I'm Rob Benetham, Channel 5, Berks County News. Who was that good-looking guy with all the hair? Well, next here on Berks County News, get the secret on how to make everyone in your house enjoy those veggies. And we'll have a preview of your weekend highlights when Berks County News continues. Hi, I'm Jim Gowan, and this is my wife, Debbie. Every day we read about higher taxes and more spending. I want to try and change that and bring common sense and mainstream ideas to the 128th District. I want to work with you to keep our schools the best in the state and to serve this community because this is where I grew up, where I started my business, and where my kids are growing up. I'd appreciate your vote on April 23rd. What a blast! The Family Grand Prix Raceway, a family fun center that the kids and parents will want to visit again and again. Just look at what you can do at the Family Grand Prix Raceway. Go-karts, slick track, miniature golf, bumper boats, batting cages, a game room, and snack bar. Ten acres of out-and-out -out fun with no admission to get in and free parking. Whether you're big or little, the excitement's at the Family Grand Prix Raceway in Leesport. Come on out and join the fun. January. February. March. Those monthly service charges. With easy checking, there are them, as long as you write no more than 15 checks a month. And there isn't any minimum balance requirement either. And you can bank by phone, transfer funds, check balances. What could be easier than that? Easy checking from Great Valley. After all, it's your money. 
In tonight's Lifestyles Report, you know how so many people, young and old, still complain about eating their veggies. Well, tonight, Jack Zarnecki gives us some tips on how to make one green extra tasty. That's at the table. Does the season of spring have a flavor? Well, as a matter of fact, it does. It's the taste of asparagus. Serious cultivation of asparagus began by a former French cavalryman. Perhaps that's the reason they call them spears. In fact, the wholesale lingo for asparagus is grass. This edible member of the lily family is rich in vitamins A and C. You can find white and purple varieties, but by far the most common is the green asparagus. The stalk comes in widely varying sizes from pencil thin to thick as a thumb. Since asparagus is a perennial plant growing for eight to 10 years, the older the plant, the thicker the stalk. Asparagus will keep for three to four days in the refrigerator, after which it takes on a, well, grassy taste. To prepare asparagus, begin by slicing off the harder white bottom part of the stalk. Larger spears also usually need to be peeled to ensure tenderness. Steaming is the best way to cook asparagus. Simply place about a half a cup of water into the bottom of a saucepan. Add the average sized asparagus and lightly salt. Add some fresh herbs and chopped garlic. Bring the heat up so that the water starts to boil. Reduce the heat so that the water simmers, then cover with a tight-fitting lid and steam for about five minutes. Less if the spears are very thin and more if they are very thick. The spears should still be a little crunchy and definitely not mushy. Serve immediately, as is, or with garlic mayonnaise. If you're going to serve the asparagus cold, plunge the cooked spears into ice water to stop the cooking. Cold asparagus is great in salads, like this one served with goat's cheese and an orange basil dressing served here at Joe's Bistro. But do people really like asparagus? Well, we decided to do a somewhat limited survey, and this is what we found out. I like asparagus raw, right from the garden. I like it hot, I like it cold, I like it vinaigrette, I like it in soup. I like Jack's asparagus. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're at the table with Jack Zarnecki. Until next week, keep, keep on, on cooking. Salud. <laughs> Well, students at St. Ignatius School were recognized for their part in a class project. State Senator Mike Opaque was on hand to distribute certificates to the students for an environmental project they began seven years ago. In that time, the class has planted over 3,000 trees. Opaque went on to urge all the students to do something special for the up upcoming Earth Week. And coming up in sports, well, actually, Jay Welsh. Oh, we have a look at what's going on around Berks County this weekend. Now, Jay Welsh joins us. Got a little ahead of myself there. Sorry about that. And in sports tonight, the local team is back in town. A couple of guys on a desk, kind of like Sports Center, you know? Dan -dan -dan. Dan -dan. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, yes, we're going to go out and have a live report. Willard Scott is out there with a live report. <laughs> now, actually, Steve Degler with a live report out of the stadium. That's coming up next in sports. That plus the AccuWeather forecast when Berks County News comes right back. Four years ago, voters in the 128th District sent Sam Rohr to Harrisburg. Since then, he's shown himself a more than competent legislator. James Broussard, chairman of Citizens Against Higher Taxes, has this to say about Sam. If taxpayers could grade their legislators, Sam Rohr would get an A+. He has one of the very highest pro-taxpayer ratings of any state representative. It would be a far better state if we had 100 more like him in Harrisburg. Sam Rohr, tried and true to your values and interest. Vote for Sam Rohr on April 23rd. The shops at Green Valley are a truly special experience, and they are close by, right in Sinking Spring. Browse through our two country gift shops with everything from country clothing to Yankee candles. You'll see the largest selection of silk and dried floral arrangements and home decor items. And our famous nursery and garden center is a gardener's paradise for both indoor and outdoor gardening. Top off your visit by relaxing at the Stone House in our 200-year-old dining room. The shops at Green Valley don't miss a single season. 
Tonight's sports report is sponsored by the Prudential Commonwealth Real Estate. It's pretty obvious. We have to move. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we find out how much our house is worth? The Rock is the answer. We think we have enough for a down payment. Now we need an agent to show us what, what we, can we can afford. afford. <laughs> the Rock is the answer. We've been talking about this transfer for six months. Yeah, now they want me yesterday. <laughs> so where do we find someone who knows how to get this house sold fast? The Rock is the answer. Stop by one of our open houses this weekend. Sports director Jay Wells joins us now, and the boys are back in town after a tough road trip. Yeah, the bats weren't there, Mike. I don't know. Uh, we're going to have to throw it out there and see what is going on with the R Phils. The Phils back in town. They'll begin their six-game homestand tonight with Trenton Thunder. Joining us live from Municipal Stadium, the voice of the R Phils, Steve Degler and Deggs. I guess it's good to be back in the friendly confines. The Phillies went one and six on their road trip. Sunday in Trenton, they had 12 hits against the Thunder. Then they go to Harrisburg for three games and have a total of nine hits in those three ball games. So they are certainly glad to be back here where they started the season four and one. Joining me tonight is the coach of the Reading Phillies, Kelly Heath. And Kelly, you were away for two years down in rookie ball. Are you glad to be back here in Reading? Yeah, I love it. I love it here. It's been a great experience the last two years that I was here, and it's, it's even better now. Uh, I got to go down to rookie ball for a couple years and fine-tune my coaching skills, I guess you could say, and work with the rookies and do a lot of the uh, fundamental work. And, and now to be back here, now that the sun's shining, it's a, it's a great place to be. Now, the weather has been brutal, and how tough was it for these players on the road trip? Well, it was tough for everybody, uh, our players and the other teams also, but it seems like our players kind of let it get to them maybe more than the other teams. Uh, you know, we just couldn't find a rhythm. We, we had a great game, and then we'd have a day off, and, and we just never did really get in the groove. All right, Kelly, good talking to you again. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Carl Pavano going for the Trenton Thunder here tonight, Jay, and it'll be Ryan Nye pitching for the Phillies. Reporting live from Municipal Stadium, this is Steve Degler, Channel 5, Berks County Sports. Thanks, Steve. We will have a score of that ball game tonight at 10 o'clock. The Philadelphia Phillies are also back at home for a five-game homestand. They'll send XR Phil Rich Hunter to the mound tonight against St. Louis. Last night, the Phils came from behind, and they did it with Zeal. Todd Zeal up in Montreal. Let's take you up there. They came from behind in this one, down by three. David Segui to the left side, from the left side, 3-2 Expos. Bottom of five, now Segui from the right side, down the right field line. There's a pattern here. And Mike Lansing will score 5-2 Montreal, but as Ross Perot would say, now here's the zeal. Todd Zeal, solo shot in the eighth. Kind of looks like Schmidty's blast back in 80. We remember it well. Cuts the lead to one, top of the ninth, and the Phils will do it again. Todd will zeal it with a three-run homer. They win it by a score of 9-8. to eight. Now, this weekend will determine where Kutztown All-American line backer John Mobley will begin his NFL career as we reported to you earlier this week Mobley is slated as a mid to late first round pick and is considered one of the top linebackers in the draft we will be up at New York at the draft tomorrow and we will have a full report on Monday well it's that time again today I completed another sports challenge those challenges keep coming in and this afternoon I had a chance to redeem myself in a sport near and dear to my heart If there's two things that I pride myself in, it's my golf game and my car. So after last week's challenge, when I was so humbled on the links, there was no way I was going down this week when challenged in auto racing. After my challenger, Chris Kenworth of Reading, saw my elegant ride, he knew he might be in for a battle. But in an effort to keep the streets of Berks County safe, we decided to take it to the track at Grand Prix Raceway. Being the homer that I am, I of course chose Penske's Rusty Wallace car. My opponent, the McDonald's car, which was appropriate because I was about to eat him for lunch. Quickest in three laps, and they're off. I gave Chris the pole position, but was quicker on the start and immediately took control. After getting to the inside, it was just a matter of hanging on. Coming down the home stretch, I was beginning to see how my extensive training at the Skip Barber Driving School was paying off. And I crossed the checkered flag with Sports Challenge win number one. All thanks to my Porsche. After all, there is no substitute. Now for all those challenges that keep coming in, keep on sending them in. I got that first victory under my belt and I'm ready to take you on. Local Sports Challenge, Berks County News, 400 Riverfront Drive, Reading, PA. Now this weekend, a few of the tennis great players from yesteryear will visit Berks County. 
to participate in the Legends of Tennis, a doubles exhibition out at Alvernia College to benefit the American Red Cross. Today, those legends were out at Hillcrest Racquet Club for a corporate clinic. Pam Shriver, John Lloyd, Marty Reeson, Virginia Wade conducting a tennis cl clinic, and tomorrow they'll be joined by all local players, but let's have John Lloyd tell you all about it. Well, we've got you know, a whole day planned tomorrow. We've got some uh, clinics, uh, a pro-am with uh, some of the sponsors and, and other guests and, and members of the public. And uh, we've got some exhibitions between uh, uh, myself and Virginia Wade and uh, Marty Reeson and Pam Shriver. We'll play some mixed doubles. I'm looking forward to a couple of days here and uh, watching a lot of people play tennis, try and help their tennis, hopefully show them some good stuff. That's all out at Alvernia beginning at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Now, finally tonight, the Flyers and Lightning even their best of seven playoff series. Last night at one apiece, the orange and black are now more like the black and blue. Last evening down at the Spectrum, Eric Lindros already suffered an injury. He played. Joining the list is John Drews with a sprained left knee. He is out. Also, John LeClaire, doubtful for game three. Unlike game one, though, this one belonged to the goalies. Hextall, 24 saves. Darren Pupa had 25 in OT. The Flyers mucking in front of the net. They thought they had it won, but no go. Dale Howard, Chuck on the other end. Brian Bellows right through Hexie's pads. This is the playoffs. They got to play through the bumps and bruises. This is this is the playoffs. You, you know, there's going to be injuries at times. This is this is hockey. We all have to uh, to bring our uh, our game to a different level. I had a, a pretty good pain in my ankle, so I didn't really know what was going on. Then I came back here, and uh, you know, I was hoping I could walk it off, but uh, it didn't happen that way. Now Leclerc is doubtful for Game Three. I know Ross, big hockey fan. I think they got a wake-up call last night. Yeah, I think after the first game, uh, and they rolled over Tampa, they thought they would just sail through the series. Obviously, the Lightning had other ideas. Yep, that's it in sports. All right, thanks, Jay. Sure. Stay tuned. The weekend AccuWeather forecast with Rob Benetham is next here on Berks County News. And good luck, George. Throughout time, visionaries have dreamed of technologies that would take them into the future. Now at Remax Real Estate Offices, that dream is a reality. Through our satellite TV network and online services, Remax is using today's best technology to meet your real estate goals for tomorrow. George, you did it! I only wish there were an easy way to reach Remax. Well, you could surf the net. I'm John Fielding. This is where they want to spend our tax dollars to put the Civic Center. Do you want your kids to come down here at night? It's the wrong project, at the wrong place, at the wrong time, for the wrong price. It's just plain wrong. Let's stop this new tax. Let's stop this Civic Center before we're left paying the bill again. Saturday night, get the most out of your TV with two channels of HBO. It's the premiere of an original movie on HBO. They dreamed of making the majors. They ended up making history. Delroy Lindo, Michael T. Williams, and Blair Underwood, soul of the game. Or choose drama on HBO, too. They went on a killing spree and blasted their way into the headlines. Woody Harrelson, Juliette Lewis, Natural Born Killers. Two great choices, two different channels. Two good reasons to watch Saturday night on HBO, the best choice on TV. Tonight's weather report is sponsored by Bayless Oldsmobile. Some said we couldn't top the Oldsmobile Sierra with anti-lock brakes, air, airbag, and all the most popular features. But we did. Introducing the 96 Oldsmobile Sierra Classic Edition with all the same great Sierra features, plus full canvas roof, luggage rack, designer stripe and V6 engine, 15996 complete. Uh-huh. The Sierra Classic Edition, only 15996 It's the spirit of 96 from Oldsmobile. Now at Bayless Oldsmobile. Well, no question, the weekend's going to be warm. Let's take a look at the current conditions. Currently, we have a weather pattern that's going to be, well, kind of a maze of outcomes. What we're looking at is uh, warm air for sure this weekend, no question about it, and some sporadic thunder showers. There's the radar. Nothing right now. We're free and clear. We should have a nice night tonight. For tonight, partly cloudy, mild, dry, and comfortable, so you sh your outdoor activities should be pretty good. For tomorrow, breezy, warm, and clouds, sunshines, clouds, sunshine, clouds, maybe a sporadic shower, maybe even a thunderstorm in the afternoon. There's a temperature, humidity, barometer, and the winds. Around the area, there's Allentown, Reading, Ephraim, Philadelphia, and Atlantic City. Tonight, 56 degrees, partly cloudy, and comfy. Tomorrow, breezy and warm, maybe a thunderstorm in the afternoon, 78 degrees, and the AccuWeather 5-day, 
Sunday, chance of a shower, 80. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, look at that. Nice temperatures, spring is here. And I want to say happy birthday to Ray Wisniewski of Reading. Okay, so we can get those weekend plans in. Yes, you can. Sounds good. Thanks, Rob. Well, that's it for this edition of First County News. Now for Rob and Jay and the entire news team, I'm Mike Rossi. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday. Good night. Good night. For planning and construction, carries through to the...